Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. I finally received a package I have been waiting and waiting and waiting for and it is this beauty right here. She's a little damaged, but it's okay because we're gonna fix her. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm gonna tape or glue or whatever, but um, yeah, I can't stand it when this happens. It's happened a few times with some of my Mothership palettes, but I also have another palette coming because I ordered the black version, which is this one right here, the standard black case, as well as the limited edition pink case because I wanted to have them both. And my theory was that I was gonna put in two different orders and I thought that this just, just might get here a little quicker because I felt like it might be a little less in demand and everybody was gonna want the limited edition pink packaging. So I was like, hey, I want them both. So I'm gonna order the black one, I'm gonna order the pink one, and I just had a feeling that this was gonna get here faster, and lo and behold, it did. <laughs> My pink one still has not shipped. I also ordered uh, the lip trio that had the new Divine Rose Gloss in it, and uh, I haven't gotten a shipment notification for that as of me filming, maybe it'll ship tomorrow, I'm not sure, but now I don't even know what to do because I really wanted it to be a part of this video, but the eyeshadow palette was more important. Now, if you are not aware, which I'm sure most of you are, the Divine Rose 2 came after the Divine Rose 1. As you can see, the packaging is very similar. Ah, oh, they're so beautiful, they are so beautiful. I'm gonna show you really quickly Divine Rose 1 against Divine Rose 2. And at the end of the video, I think I'm gonna put some timestamps down in the description box so you guys can see. If you wanna see my review, if you wanna see the two different looks, yes, I did two different looks, and then my comparisons are gonna be at the end. So I'll probably put timestamps down in the description box so that you guys can just kinda of skip through if you don't wanna see certain things. This is the Divine Rose 1, and here is the gorgeous Mothership 8 Divine Rose 2. This one's definitely much more pinky peach. Let me show you side by side. This one I think leans more on the natural side and this one kind of bumps it up. It's like your playful palette. Oh, I love them so, so much and they definitely pair really well together. But I will compare these like with swatches and everything at the end. I'm not gonna be like swatching everything side by side. I'm just gonna take comparisons of this palette and other palettes in my collection and just show you anything that might be comparable to the new palette. This retails for $125. Like I said, there is a limited edition one. Um, it came back into stock. It went back out of stock. I've heard that some people's orders got canceled. I don't think my order got canceled. I feel like I would have already gotten an email about that. I feel like it's just running behind with shipping. But I do know that it will be coming to Sephora as well on June 15th. Now, I was just looking at the Sephora website and it says that this one's limited edition. I guess in my head I was thinking that the black packaging was gonna be permanent and that the pink one was going to be limited, limited. But yeah, I, I suppose that they're both gonna be limited edition, which makes me really, really sad because this is such a beautiful palette. I can see this one being one that a lot of people really would gravitate towards and the reason why I say that is because I think I've gotten more comments about this palette than I have any other palette but let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to give you guys the details, the swatches, then we will get into the two different eye looks, my opinions, and then the comparisons. For the shades in the palette we have Skin Show Rose Opal, Naked Blush, Eleganza, Bronze Rose 005, Gold Lust 001, Extreme Burgundy, Divine Dusk, Rose Seduction, VR Sex Terrestrial, <laughs> and Astral Pink Moon. There's one shade in this palette that's not considered to be eye safe, and that's this shade right here. It can stain the eyes, it can be irritating. I personally didn't have any irritation or anything like that. I did have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of staining, but when I washed my face the next day, it was gone. And then something special. Now, in my <laughs> in my tutorial, I had called this a duochrome and multi-chrome several different times because I just I had not read about the palette beforehand, but she's calling this 
a trio chrome, which I had never heard before. Multi-chromes are definitely something that's been on the market. You've seen them a lot with indie brands and you're seeing them more and more. And I really like that it's in this palette and it's really gorgeous, but it just, uh, it doesn't slide off my tongue, trio chrome. I just wanna call it a multi-chrome so badly, but basically that is what it is. And I'm gonna show you this shade just really quickly. So you can see the different reflex in it. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. This is something that you're not really going to see just how gorgeous it is on camera. I've already looked at the footage of the eye that I did with this shade. And I was like, man, you know, I really hate that. It's just sometimes with lighting, you know, it can reflect off of shimmery stuff and make them look, it can make them look textured or it can make it to where you just don't see the shift. And unfortunately, I feel like that happened, but hopefully you'll see it a little bit better whenever I do my swatches later, because I'm gonna be using my phone. It's gonna be a little bit darker and you should be able to see it just a little bit better. Now that you guys have seen the swatches, let's go ahead and get into the two different eye looks. I'm gonna do this one first, and then I will show you this look right after. To start off this look, I'm gonna grab this shade on a Zoeva 227. Starting off in the crease, Back and forth windshield wiper motions first. Circular motions to blend it upward. Same shade on a BK Beauty 207. I'm just buffing this right along the lower lash line. Using the same 227, now I'm gonna go in with this shade. I'm gonna start off by deepening up the outer corner, going into the crease. I'm also gonna be taking it on the inner corner. Same color on a refer 03. This time I'm using it wet. Again, I like to keep from getting fallout on my lower lash line. And I am just going back and forth, just a little closer to the lashes. Refer 14 in the darkest shade in the palette. I am going to apply this to the outer corner. And again, the inner corner. I'm bringing it slightly upward into the crease, just on this outer portion that smokes it out just a little bit. Same shade again. I'm taking care, refer 03, right up against the lash line. I probably didn't even need to put down the other color. <laughs> I could have just used this one, but it's okay. I'm going back in with that BK Beauty brush, no additional product, just going right around the edges. MAC 242, first shade in the palette, highlighting the brow arch. Same brush, and I'm gonna grab the darker gold. This will be placed on the center of the lid. And then I'm gonna start tapping around the edges to blend it out. Intensifying the center. And again, I will tap around the edges. Lastly, I'm gonna take this shade on a MAC 228. Applying this to the inner corner. And then I'm gonna go add on liner and mascara. Zoeva 227, grabbing the matte peach. I'm going to go directly into the crease, back and forth windshield wiper motions.
And then I'm going to start blending upwards to use this as my transition shade. Same shade, Wayne Goss 27S. I'm just going to buff this right along the lower lash line. Going back in with the 227, I'm going to grab the pink. I am going to deepen up the outer corner and the crease. I'm not taking this shade all of the way in, just kind of smoking out this outer corner a little bit. It's going to get mostly covered up anyway with the duochrome I put on top. BK Beauty 206. Now I'm going to go in with the duochrome or multi-chrome. I'm just going to apply this all over the lid. pushing it up into the crease so it's not a harsh line. This is so pretty. Oh, I really hope this is catching on camera because it is so pretty. Refer P21 and the lighter gold, highlighting the brow arch. On a refer 03, I'm going back in with that multi-chrome. I am going to take this right along the lower lash line, and I'm using it wet this time. On my lid, it was dry, but I like to use shades like this wet on the lower lash line because I feel like it adheres a little bit better because I have powder obviously setting my under eye, and it creates a little less fallout. Same brush, now I'm going to go in with this shade. I am going to apply this right at the lash band. I actually think I need to grab this one so it shows up a little bit better. Lastly, BK Beauty 204, and I'm going to take this color on the inner corner. And then I'm going to go add on inner rim liner and mascara. All right, so let me tell you how I feel about this palette. I think it's beautiful. I think she did an amazing job with it. I really like that she did something a little bit different. I have to tell you that I really want this out. I would have loved to see this one be like a really beautiful peach, but that's just me nitpicking. This shade also has been done before. Four. It hasn't been in a palette, but it's been in a kit. And I'll insert a picture here. I was scrolling through <laughs> Pat McGrath's Instagram to find a picture of this kit. And it was all the way back in 2015. So not in a palette, but it has been in a kit. I don't have that kit, so I don't personally mind that I have the shade Technically, it's a repeat, but I don't have the shade, so it doesn't really bother me. However, I'm just tired of golds, and I've said that before. And while it fits in with the theme of this, I think that peach would have fit in better, especially with this shade here. It would have complemented the pinks, the mattes, the metallics, everything. Those worked out so beautifully. Yes, I got some fallout, but I was able to just kind of brush them away. These shades all worked really well as well, and this is what I would consider to be the special shade section. Definitely special with the trichrome in here. This isn't something that she has done before. So I really like that she did something that was outside the box for her. These right here are not as, like, especially this one. It's still special, but it's not as, I want texture I feel like is the wrong word. It doesn't have as much grit to it. It still has a lot of shine and a lot of sparkle, which I really like. But it's not as much as the ones in the past. Like, let me see really quickly. If you can see this one here, it has a whole lot more, like just, uh, let me see, okay, let me do this one. This one is smoother than this one, but this one still gives a really nice shine to it. So this one's gonna be a little bit messier, 
but it's going to be a little bit more intense. This one is going to be a little bit softer on the eye, but I still think it is special. It's a really beautiful shade. When you see me use this one here, it's not as intense, but I used a fluffy brush. Let me show you what it will look like though if I decided to go in with it wet. There it is right there. It's a little bit more on the metallic side. It doesn't have like the grit of those special shades. But overall, I feel like this palette is a little bit more user friendly and I really like the color scheme. Again, the only thing I would change is that I just want it to be peach. <laughs> but this is beautiful. I love, like I absolutely love this matte right here. It is so stinking pretty. I'm so glad that she put that in there. I just, I, I live for that. I'm all about those peachy tones anyway. And the depth of this is just stunning. It is so stunning. I think that if you picked up this palette, you're gonna be extremely happy with it. And uh, yeah, I am extremely happy with it too, but I'm dying to see what the limited edition packaging looks like. Oh, I can't wait to get that in the mail. I'm really excited about it. I probably won't even use it. It'd just be like in my Pat McGrath section of my, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Don't judge me. <laughs> it's just a beautiful palette. So this will be the one that I use. And then I have one that will be just like, you know, collector's purposes. Anywho, you guys, that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already. And if you want to see all the comparisons that I have to show you, just keep watching. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Right here we have the original Divine Rose and the Divine Rose number two. So you can see clearly, definitely not the same. Go in with this one first. And then this one, you can see this one's definitely deeper. This one's much brighter. This one and this one. This one's more of a pinky kind of opalescent. This one's definitely more golden white. I'm going to swatch these two for you. You can see this one's much more metallic. This one's more of like a satin type of finish. The last thing I want to swatch are the golds. I know that these aren't the same, but I just want to show them to you anyway. There they are. This one's definitely much more intense. Here is Ritualistic Rose. I'm going to swatch this purple up against this one. You can see, oh, I love this one so much from Ritualistic Rose. Oh, so good. Golds, again, you're not going to see any similarities here, but just for comparison. Iconic Illumination. I want to swatch these two. I also want to do this shade as well as this shade. La Vie and Rose. I want to swatch this one up against this one. I need to just remember to keep my finger straight. I'm always going to use my pointer finger for the comparison palette and middle finger for the other, if I can just remember that. All right, so this one is definitely more shimmery. It has like more of a sheen to it. This one has a sheen, but it's more of a satin matte. This one's more of a satin metallic. That's how I would describe it anyway. And it's definitely lighter than the La Vie and Rose. I do not think that these are going to be similar, but I am going to test them out anyway. The last shade I'm gonna swatch out of here is this one versus this one, which they're two completely different textures and different colors. Let me actually see this. Yeah, that's this one's lighter than this one. Do this so you guys can see it better. There you go. Metal Morphosis. I definitely want to swatch this gold up against this gold. Deeper. It has more glitter to it. This one's more just like of a smooth metallic. Mothership 2 Sublime. I'm going to take this and this. Kind of similar, this one's a little bit more peachy pink. Again, the golds, 
not gonna be alike. Oh, ah, this is the best gold. In my personal opinion, this palette has the best gold. I love all the sparkle in it. It is so pretty. I'm gonna swatch this shade against the multi or trio, <laughs> the trio chrome, just so you guys can see the amount of shift. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I know this has a little bit of a shift as well, so I wanted you guys to see, but I'm, I don't think it's catching on camera as well, but this is incredible. My personal favorite bronze seduction. Oh, this is my baby right here. You'll see that this gold has green in it. Look at that reflective green. And again, I'm sure you guys have seen this a million times. I know this one's going to be whiter. And this one's going to be pinker. But again, just show you guys. Midnight Sun. I'm gonna go straight for this one. <laughs> Swatch it up against this one. There's just more of like, um, more champagne in this. This one's more of a white gold. This one and this one. Let's do the golds. And then lastly, subversive. Uh, what do I want to play with here? The golds. This one had a deeper gold, but this one almost has like a greenish hint to it. Or this one's more of a pure gold. You can see. I feel like we're just doing this. <laughs> Always these shades right up top here. Which is nice to have though, to have that highlight shade in each palette. Overall, I have to say that this one is pretty unique. I love the shades in here. I'm really happy with this palette. I'm happy that I have it, and I can't wait to play with it some more. So if you're asking if I would suggest it, absolutely, and I think it's a lot of fun. It's something just a little bit more playful. I'm really digging it.